A Toronto woman is outraged by what she says was a strange request on board a Porter flight. She was seated and buckled in when a man refused to sit next to her for religious reasons. Eventually, the man was seated next to another male passenger and the flight departed, but questions over religious accommodation remain. Natalie McDonald is a lawyer in Toronto and she joins us now. So Natalie, do you th first of all, so this woman was asked to move. Eventually she didn't move, but a man switched seats with this man, so it, there was an accommodation made. Is an airline obliged to accommodate that man who says that he can't sit next to a woman for his religious beliefs? Well, Andrew, that's a great question. And in answer to your question, yes. In fact, human rights legislation, federally and provincially, makes it clear that all organizations have a duty to accommodate, whether it be an employee or a client of an organization, up to the point of undue hardship and with dignity and respect. And, okay, so that the interesting question, inter <clears throat> initially the woman says that she was asked uh, to move. Is that, would that, is that a fair way to deal with the situation or is it better to ask the man to move? I, I think it's better to ask the, the gentleman to move and I would say that in this particular situation with Porter, there was a clash of human rights. On one hand, there was the religious accommodation issue, and on the other, the discrimination, the clear discrimination against the woman. And I think that Porter did the only thing it could possibly do in that situation and asked to try and have some accommodation mm -hmm. for the man. Now, what's interesting is that this woman brings up some interesting examples, and I don't know whether it's apples and oranges, but help me through this. She sure. says, you know what? If uh, someone had said that there was a gay person next to them and uh, that because of their strong Christian beliefs uh, that have trouble with homosexuality, that if that person said, I need to move, I can't sit next to this person, they wouldn't have accommodated. The other example, she said, if it had been a person of color and that someone for their racist views uh, couldn't sit next to someone of color, that they would not have been accommodated. So what do you think of those examples? Andrew, I think she makes a great point. I think those are great examples and I think that the issue really is that you have to be reasonable in your request to accommodate and in this particular case it seems like the request for religious accommodation was a pass to discriminate against the woman and that's where human rights has to say no that is not reasonable and it will say that. So, so sorry. Let me just help. Now help me understand this. Sure. So, is, are they? Based, are you saying that it's unreasonable for someone for religious reasons to say that he can't sit next to a woman? When it infringes upon someone else's human rights, it mm -hmm. is unreasonable. And in particular, this case was a clear case of a discriminatory act against the woman because he didn't want to sit next to her. And we've seen this again and again, and where two human rights clashes, you need to ensure that, you know, you are accommodating both parties, uh -huh. and I think it would be discriminatory to the woman to ask her to move in this particular situation. But it's okay to get the man, find the man another seat. Absolutely. That, where he's comfortable. Absolutely. Okay. So, is it the right thing to do? though because a lot of people are questioning whether or not we sh you know is there a line that you just can't cross well let's take it back a notch let's talk about accommodation in general so everyone has the right to be accommodated in the workplace or in organizations up to the point of undue hardship the courts define undue hardship as being something that would cost the company severe amounts of money or disrupt the workplace or in fact have a safety implication for the workplace or for the organization. So where an employer or an organization can prove that that is the case, then in fact the employer does not have to accommodate that. And in this particular situation with Porter, in fact they could be able, I think they can make a legitimate argument to say that it would disrupt the plane mm -hmm. to move, to have to move the woman. So they were trying to accommodate the man, as I understand it, mm -hmm. and they asked other passengers to, to 
actually, you know, try and accommodate him um, when in fact they really had no other choice on this issue. Do you worry about a slippery slope argument? I don't know whether that's a legal question, but you know, that has to be asked. It always is a question of a slippery slope and the courts are always required to balance competing interests and that's what makes law so, you know, so fun for lawyers yeah. and so unpredictable and, and very difficult for others to grasp when they're in these situations. But definitely I would say there are there is the possibility of a particular slippery slope, as you say. Natalie, it was great speaking with you. Thank you very much Thank for you, helping Andrew. us understand the law with regard to this important issue.